I'm going to cover the pathophysiology of Cushing syndrome. However, before I do, I need to take just a really quick look at the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis so that the basics are understood. So let's start with the hypothalamus. So we have the hypothalamus right here, and it's producing a hormone called uh, CRH, or corticotropic releasing hormone. So most of the productions of the hypothalamus, as far as the hormones go, are releasing hormones. The notable exceptions would be the secretions of the posterior pituitary, which are basically extensions of the hypothalamus. So then coming off of the hypothalamus, we get the stalk and we get our anterior pituitary. And under the influence of CRH, it's going to produce ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Then so ACTH is released in the body and it goes through the bloodstream. And here, so here we have our kidney, and on top of our kidney we have our adrenal gland. So we got that on both sides. Have our adrenal glands. So this is the adrenal, and this is the renal. And when ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland, you get two major products. The first is going to be glucocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and androgens. Now, just really quickly, we'll uh, talk about the very basic histology of the adrenal gland. You've got a cortex, and you've got a medulla, and so these are uh, separated. And then within the cortex, you have three basic zones, and that's going to be, and I, you just put GFR, because why? It kind of fits with the concept of the GFR in the kidney. So you have the zona glomerulosa the zona fasciculata, fasciculata, and the zona reticularis. Sitting on top of all of this, you have a capsule. So there's your capsule. Now I like the little mnemonic that Sean gave us in, in lab the other day. He said, the deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. So the, what you're talking about, zona glomerulosa is going to be primarily aldosterone. And then zona fasciculata is going to be the uh, glucocorticoids. So you get uh, gluco glucose metabolism regulation. And then the zona reticularis, you get the androgens or the sex hormones. So salt, sugar, sex, the deeper you go, the sweeter it gets. However, this is only partially true because the fasciculata and the reticularis have quite a bit of overlap in the hormones that they can both produce. And then in the medulla, you're going to get your catecholamines. So that's going to be epinephrine and norepinephrine. So going back up here, I want to point out that uh, ACTH, it stimulates both glucocorticoids and uh, androgens. So you only get both glucocorticoids and androgen secre uh, secretion when stimulated by ACTH. So supposing we had like a tumor that's secreting glucocorticoids, it's not going to have any androgenic effect. However, if we have hyperplasia or a tumor that's secreting ACTH, then you're going to get both of these uh, overproduced and oversecreted into the body. So knowing and understanding that can help you on a differential diagnosis if you have excess cortisol. Okay, so in review, we've got the hypothalamus producing CRH. And that is stimulating the anterior pituitary to secrete ACTH. ACTH. Now, first of all, ACTH will come back and negatively inhibit the, the hypothalamus. But it will also act to stimulate the adrenal glands to produce both glucocorticoids and androgens and the glucocorticoids primarily cortisol will also feed back and inhibit the hypothalamus so the hypothalamus can be inhibited by negative feedback It can also be inhibited by the circadian rhythm 
the circadian rhythm. And basically what that's going to look like is this. So my y-axis I have my CRH and ACTH secretion on the x-axis I have the time of day. So this is right when I wake up and then this is sleep. So right when you wake up your your levels are kind of high. And cortisol, and so this is all being measured. So we this is production of CRH, ACTH, but it's all being measured essentially by monitoring cortisol. So what I'm I'm talking about here, the cortisol levels, they're gonna start off high right when you wake up. They're gonna drop down to a, a mediocre point throughout the day. Right when you go to sleep, they're gonna fall a little bit and then they're gonna shoot back up at the end of your sleep. Uh, so at the end of the sleep you're going to have high levels again. This is important in growth because cortisol stimulates the production the production of growth hormone but it also inhibits the release of growth hormone. So at this stage right here, you're going to start producing a whole lot of extra growth hormone. And then as soon as you wake up a few hours later, you're going to get the release of that growth hormone. And so it's really important that as a, as a growing child, you get a full night's sleep. So the circadian rhythm can, uh, can feed back and, and alter the, uh, the hypothalamus and here pituitary. And things that can alter the circadian rhythm, so what can change? Well, it's changed by one, physical and psychological stress. It's changed by CNS and pituitary disorders. Your circadian rhythm can be changed by Cushing's disease. Cushing syndrome. It can be due to a defect in the liver, I'm just gonna put live, defect in liver metabolism of cortisol. Liver or I'm sorry, renal failure. And finally, alcohol and drugs. So alk and drugs. And specifically the drug I'm talking about is uh, ciproheptadine. Ciproheptadine is a, a drug that's known to alter the circadian rhythm. And it's important to point out that as far as alcohol, it has to be chronic alcoholism and then renal failure also has to be chronic renal failure for it to adjust the circadian rhythm. So there's so those things can adjust the the hypothalamus and then also uh, the last thing is uh, CNS so higher input from the CNS can feedback and inhibit uh, CRH and it's important to note that with negative feedback there's two mechanisms that happen there so the first mechanism is, is fast and what happens is it's a cell surface cell surface receptor and so it happens very quickly and it's it's important to know that it's rate dependent so it doesn't matter it, for the fast mechanism if you have high cortisol levels that's not going to affect the fast mechanism it, if you have cortisol levels that start off slow and shoot up really quickly so a fast rate of increase that will cause the fast mechanism and the cell surface receptors to feed back and stop uh, production of, of CRH. Then there's also a delayed mechanism so number two is delayed and that's going to be intracytoplasmic so internal so receptors in the cytoplasm are going to act and this is not rate dependent but it is dose and time dependent so if you get those high doses it's if it goes up slowly the high doses will eventually feed back and inhibit it regardless of the fast mechanism not being active